This meeting is being recorded. Yes, it is. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are so excited to be back. I think I've said we are so excited to be back every single episode for the last two years. So we're just going to keep that same thing. Hey, everyone. Again, we are so excited to be back for another episode of the Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp series. I'll start when we kicked off the bootcamp two years ago, th almost three years ago now, because this is going into the next season, it, it was really coming from a place of how can we fill a need for entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out what to do now that we are battling with COVID. And so again, in 2020, we said, this is what we're going to do. This is our response. And so we started putting together 12 business workshops on various topics designed to equip entrepreneurs, small business owners, and nonprofit leaders um, in order to be a part of economic sustainability. You see, at this time, our goal was really to educate and equip business owners and leadership professionals with strategies and resources that you all can apply to your business immediately. We did not want you to wait. We knew it was chaotic. We knew a lot of things were going on and we just wanted to do our part to help put those fires out and help us breathe. So we then returned in 2021 to host the second season of the Business Sense Bootcamp series and combined virtual, these virtual segments have organically reached more than 50 15,000 people. It still blows my mind. Um, we've had over 7,000 virtual platform views. We have welcomed over 150 live guests, and we've partnered with more than 30 other subject matter experts. Now, we're going to talk today about partnerships. That's one of my sweet spots, but this is a big deal. And so we want to make sure to thank you for doing your part by being here. And here we are in season three, back again for episode five, because it's still important that we remain proactive in increasing access to tangible knowledge and helping you all develop the professional skills as we are navigating this post-COVID world. For those of you who are new to me, Hey there, I am A. Margot Blair. I am a, an author, educator, and strategic advisor. I'm also the founder of Discover Her Worldwide, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization headquartered in the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Our vision at Discover Her has been for the last several years to bridge generational gaps between diverse groups of women. Now we say pre-Rona, we would do this through conferences, trainings, and seminars such as this, but they were in person. We got to hug each other in real life. Um, and as we are navigating this post-COVID world at Discover Her, we're cultivating virtual experiences such as this, as well as the hybrid experiences um, where we can still get that personal touch point in order to teach the fundamentals that may have been missed. Equip leaders with actionable steps that you can apply to your business as well as your life and so that we can grow our professional networks. And speaking of professional networks, I would be remiss if I did not welcome and thank the company behind the yes of bringing oh, vision to light. Summer, she, she is the National African American Business Development Manager for Comerica Bank. Summer, it is always so, so good to see you. How are you, my sister? Good morning. I am doing great. It's so good to see you every single time we get to see each other. No, I haven't seen Margaret in a very long time in person, so I can't wait till we can do this in I person know. again. <laughs> but we are so excited to be here. You know, this is probably my longest running business since boot camp, um, and I absolutely love it. Yes, go Margo, go discover her worldwide. It's just amazing. I mean, and we keep coming back to Margo every single season just because it's like we Margo can do it. She she she's has success stories. She has proof in her and what she does and in her work. So I thank you for allowing us to partner with you and have this amazing relationship. Um, and I'm excited about the talk today because it's really all about relationship building and partnerships and what we've done together um, shows that it certainly does work. So thank you for having me. 
And thank you again, Summer. And I am going to go over a couple of housekeeping uh, details, but again, you Summer said it here first. It is all about relationship building. Today's conversation is about strategic partnerships made simple. But that's that's the that's the professional terminology. It all comes down to relationships. And so get comfy. If you need to run and grab a uh, water or a pen go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over a few housekeeping details and then we will dive into this juicy discussion today. So if you are new here, if you are a first timer, welcome. Um, we invite you to be an active participant in this discussion. And I want to share exactly what that looks like. Um, being an active participant is um, you sharing that you are getting something from this. So if something stands out or resonates and speaks to you, just let us know in the comments. We'll see it and we'll just say, hey, we like that one too. You. Um, make sure you have your notepad and pen ready because we are going to be going through a lot of content over the next 90 minutes or so, but there are going to be tangible nuggets that you can take. And then even after the call, you can start applying these strategies and tips and recommendations that we discussed today. So we want to make sure that you are active in taking those notes. As well, um, if you need us to provide additional clarity, let us know in that, the comment section and we'll try and see it. And then we'll be able to provide that additional clarity. We always encourage you to share these lives for several reasons. But the main reason is that there is somebody else in your network who can benefit from this discussion that we're having today, as well as all of the other discussions from the episodes of the bootcamp series. And so we just encourage you to be a cheerful giver and share this episode with your network. Um, and then finally, we have to take a moment to thank each of you for joining us because in truth, we know that you could be anywhere else in the world, but you are here with us to learn, to grow, and be prepared to make a, a greater impact in the lives of those you're called to lead. So without further ado, let us go ahead and dive in. Summer, again, I think this is going to be a really great conversation. We are at the halfway mark through 2022. And then also, this is really the time, quarter three, quarter four. It's partnership season. It's my favorite season. But let us go ahead and just talk about that today. Today, as we're talking about strategic partnerships made simple, I really want us to kind of unpack this conversation, the power of collaboration. What does, what does relationship building really look like on a fundamental level? Um, what are some of the myths of partnerships? It's really what we're going to talk about today. And then really, um, how do we establish and retain partnerships? And then some secrets to successful partnerships. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. So again, have your pen ready. And Summer, let's go ahead and just dive in. Yeah, let's jump in. Let's jump in. I'm trying to get to Facebook. So if oh, we see my good. eyeballs you're going good. down, I'm just like, you know me and, and technology. I, I love it. I'm, I'm literally trying to share it to you. So okay. one, of the, one of the main things that I think is a, a common myth around partnerships is that you have to have this like social following of t tens of thousands of people. And you have to have all of this social proof in order for any partner to even pay attention to you. Um, mm. That's a lie. Like, I'm just, I'm just rip that bandaid off. Like that, that's, a, yeah. that's a lie. And I know that a, a few things, number one, opportunities are missed when we don't make the ask, when we don't ask for what we need and just be prepared to get that. Um, and mm -hmm. so let's, let's really kind of continue unpack that summer. What, what, why do you feel that people just assume these things about partnerships? And then as a result of these assumptions, they're struggling to really make a greater impact in the business because they don't have partnerships. Yeah. So what I see, and, and, and a lot of times it's fear. Like what if, what, what if they tell me no, like that's the worst case scenario, honestly, it's just like, right. no, thank you. That's like the worst case. And they'll say it nicely. It's no one's going to come at you this, with all types of, um, you know, intent to hurt you or harm you. And if it's a no, it might just be a not right now. You have to kind of see as to why they're, what they're saying that. But to be honest, the, the original, the first reaction is 
I'd rather not ask. Like, I don't want to put myself in a, um, in a, in a position that makes me look like I, I'm needy or, you know, that, that feeling that some of us have of, you know, no, I'm not thirsty. I'm not going to go like, no, you, you need to ask, you need to have these relationships. You need to be hungry. Like as a business, as a corporation, we want to see that you want, because it's not us that you're doing business with. It's not, Margo's not doing business with Summer in the grand scheme of things, right? Margo's doing business with Comerica. I'm just a vessel or representative of Comerica Bank. If Summer goes away, Margo will still have that relationship with Comerica. So they are just really the safeguards, the, the yes people that tell you yay or nay, but it's not me that you're doing business with, it's Comerica. So it's, it's Comerica still wants to do business with you or any other bank or any other organization that you want to do business with and not fear the person who's kind of relaying that information. And I think that's where that first hangup is, is the, I don't want to be told no, I don't want to feel like I'm in a predicament of you know, having my hand out. And, and that's not what it's about at all. It's not. So I want us, I want us to take a step back. I don't feel like we've told this story for a while. And so I want us to kind of go back through our story. And I know I'm going to pull, like, I'm just going to make you keep talking today. Cause I feel like I talk yeah. a lot. Um, but I want to tell the story from your perspective of like how we met and then that journey. And then I'm going to come on the tail end and kind of add in a few details from my perspective, because I was going through something different during that season. Yeah. And so I want it to be super practical for them. So when we're saying it's not summer, when you're saying that it's not summer that I, that we, that I am partnering with, Discover Her is partnering with, walk them through the journey of how we even established our relationship and then how we're here today. Yeah. So first of all, I will let everybody know that establish, uh, establishing a relationship is different for everyone. It's just like friends. You know, you're going to meet a friend at a coffee shop and you're going to meet another friend that might have been your best friend from high school or college. So just know that your relationships are not going to be produced the exact same way every single time. Um, I know that's kind of like, duh, but I mean, it needs to be said because if you attempt what Margot did, it might not go well on every other <laughs> person. Fair. So Fair. just know, yeah, just, just know that breath of, I can find relationships everywhere. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, Margot. So for the first question, you wanted me to kind of venture into how we originally um, met up. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I was, my first introduction to Margot was not even an introduction to Margot. It was an introduction to an organization that I just started doing business with. It was a large organization and I needed to, I, I wanted to donate to them. I wanted to give charitable contributions. So from my end, that's what it looks like. It's money being given from the bank to the community. And through that community, it would be done through a, a 501c3. Okay. So in order for me to give those fundings, sometimes I have to go to the events, I have to take a look at the organization, make sure that they align with the bank. So that's my focus is making sure this organization aligns with the bank, that they're doing all the wonderful things. We can take pictures, we can, you know, shake hands, smile, wave, put the pictures in the newspaper, put the pictures on social media, send it over to my marketing team. Like it's all business. You have to understand. It's like the initial, like, I want to go work with this organization. I want to see what they do. I want to see their hustle. I want to see their drive. I want to see the impact of the community. That is what I'm thinking of. It's still a business mind. It's still strategic. We're still planning. Okay. So, um, and that was what I was doing at that time. It was a completely different organization. However, Margot, who happened to have her own organization, which is fine. She wasn't even in the, the section of the, the business leaders that were there. Margot was not in the, the room for everybody else that I was speaking with and dealing with. Margot wasn't the CEO of this organization. Margot was a volunteer of this organization. So Margot wasn't in the room with all the high, you know, pollutant people who were talking and giving speeches and shaking hands and taking pictures. Margot was in the front Perfect. checking people in. Margo was, Margo wasn't even, she didn't have her books out. She didn't have her flyers out. Margo didn't have her website up. Margo didn't even have her own shirt on. Okay. She had the other organization's shirt on. Margo was there to help the other organization succeed. Margo was volunteering. She was not getting paid for this. She was not even anticipating to build or meet anybody. She just was there to help 
the organization who is helping the community. So first frame of thought, that's what I saw. I, I bypassed Margo a couple times. Hey, where's my name tag? Hey, ma'am, what, 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 what are, where do I go? Like, you know, the people that you bypass who are, who are putting you in different rooms, like the ushers, like Margo was putting me everywhere I needed to go. She was very kind. She brought me water. Like if we're in Arizona, y'all, like she brought me water. And that was just an act of kindness on her behalf. She did not have to do that. That was not part of her resume. That was not part of her job description. <laughs> like this was, she was still a CEO of her own company offering to serve the community she didn't know who i was she just knew that i was that i was just roaming around looking lost because i didn't know <laughs> that's what we do we show up we expect to know exactly we have no idea where we're going we're just walking around trying to figure out where we fit in so that's what i was doing margo was every time there was a new session she's like oh summer i think you're supposed to be here here let me go get you in contact with this person this is a great person you know they will guide you to this direction Margo was moving me around while she was still manning a table for check-in, for manning a table for questions, for manning a table for people who wanted to become a member of this organization. That's what Margo was doing. There was a session going on that I didn't care about being in because it didn't really pertain to me. I already saw a few going on. So I was like, I'm good. Let me go see what's going on out in the hall. As a corporate person, you have to remember, we're still working. So while we go and do the sessions, while we go meet and greet, we're still working on our cell phones. So I came out to work on my cell phone and Marco just happened to be there. And I just wanted to learn a little bit more about the organization from the eyes of a volunteer. And so we started talking and so she explained the organization, which I love, love the organization. I'm still with that organization. But Margo, and I wanted to know more about Margo because during this time, during these, I was there at eight in the morning. Margo, by this time, it was like one o'clock in the afternoon. I've already seen Margo a couple of times. She's already helped me as a person, not me as a Comerica employee, but me as a person. She's already attended to my needs and made me feel comfortable. So what was I going to do? I'm going to feel comfortable gauging into conversation with Margot, in which we did. And she told me about the organization. She never really dove into herself until I asked. Until I said, tell me about what do you do? Like, you, you're, you have all this. I knew the back kind of a small background of like, you are a genius. What are you doing here? And she's like, oh, I'm just volunteering. So I had a day off. Like, I had time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so she's doing this. And she, I'm like, tell me more. Tell, like, I need to know more about you. I need to know more about the people who are serving the community that I'm trying to serve. Tell me about who you are, who Margo is. And what is it? Because when, when we are in the community, we want links, we want connections because cut, and honestly, coming from a big corporation like Comerica, we don't have boots on the ground all the time, right? We don't have the ears to the ground knowing what's going on with, with our community. And so I need, I was like, give me, give me information. Tell me what's going on. Tell me, you know, you own your own business. Oh my gosh. Tell me about that. Tell me how that's going. Because again, this was during, this was right before COVID hit, by the way. So, but it was still a difficult time to be a black owned business in this world. It really was. So I just, I was just trying to figure out, you know, what her struggles were, what she was doing, how it was going. And she was extremely real. And I loved all of it because I didn't want a company telling me, oh, I'm doing great. My P&Ls look great. My balance sheet is perfect. I made, you know, I'm 200% increase every month over month. Like, I don't, this doesn't even seem right. Like you, you shouldn't be here if that were the case. Like, but Margo was there. She told me her real struggle. She told me her real success. She told me where she came from. She told, and we had, what was it like an hour to talk? We were just chit chatting while they were in session. Nobody else was around. It was just her and I just talking. And she took that time to tell me about her. She took that time to tell me about her focus and her dreams and what she wanted to do. Then we exchanged information. <laughs> and then I, I think both of us lost the information we exchanged. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and then six months later, at another event that she just so happened to be volunteering at, <laughs> I was like, you! <laughs> Literally across the room. You were supposed to call me. <laughs> Hi. I was like, what are you doing? My husband was there. It was like a Christmas event, a holiday event. Like I had guests at my table because I bought a table for the event. I was like, I remember you. Like most people, they're like, do you remember me? I'm like, oh yeah, I remember you. I don't remember them. But I was like, you were, I, I remember you and you were supposed to call me and we were supposed to connect. We needed to have lunch. And I was like, give me a call. 
And that was just like, oh shoot. And I know in her mind, she must've been thinking, I was supposed to call her. I was, and I probably was like, did I lose her number? Am I just grilling her because I lost everything? <laughs> but I was like, please, please contact me so we can at least go back into having lunch, maybe connect a little bit more, see how I can help you, whether it's little or big, what can it be done? And so then she did reach out and we were able to connect and we ended up going to a breakfast, like a morning break. Don't worry, breakfasts are great. Business people love breakfast, by the way. So if you offer breakfast, they will be super key to go do that. We went to breakfast and she told me even more. And, and from that point, I said, yes, I wanna help. Yes, um, let me know what can be done. Yes, let's get this going. Yes, yes, yes. So that was how our relationship started. It wasn't a check written the first day I met Margot. It was a relationship built. It was a, um, a, a communication that we had. We, we understood each other on a personal level too. And that was very, very key. Um, she knew about my family. I knew about her family more than she knew about Comerica Bank. Okay. She doesn't really care about Comerica Bank. You have to be, you have to be honest. We don't, we, not that I don't care about Comerica. Of course I care about Comerica Bank, but I'm not going to go into conversation about our history. No. I'm going to, I'm going to go in about my history. I want to know about her history. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started. That's how we communicated. That's how we got started. And then from that point, it was, I'm let's, let's do some big, let's do some big. She's like, do you, do you want to do this? I'm like, let me see what I can do. <laughs> and then I said, yes, yes, I'd love to. Do you want to do this? Yes, I'd love to. Do you want to do this? I don't know. Maybe not. It doesn't really align with the bank. Okay. How about this? So I was like, yeah, that sounds great. So Margo kept in communication with me after I told her and I, I explained that, yes, that's, I want to work with you. I want to see how we can make this work between Comerica and discover her. She was gung ho. She was like, Let, let's do it. And it hasn't stopped since that first, the first initial um, give. It, it hasn't stopped since. And she's been blowing our minds. She, her numbers are outrageous. Her numbers are fantastic. So all we can do is applaud. So that is the story, in my opinion, in the corporate opinion of Margo and, Co and Summer, basically not Margo and Comerica at this point, Margo and Summer. <laughs> and Summer, first of all, thank you. Thank you for sharing that because it like, it kind of brought me back too. And this is, it's really great to, to be able to see it from this perspective. Right. And this is why I said, I want to hear it from your side. I want you to share, you know, share it with our audience. And then I want to be able to chime in and fill in these gaps. I would, I didn't even know you were going to go there. And so that's the best part of it is for me, I, I, I was, I was there to serve. I, I wasn't there with the Discover Her hat on, the A and B Consulting and Co hat on. I was there to serve. And that is the biggest thing that I've seen where people go wrong. Number one, it is, oh, 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 that's, oh, okay, cool. So hi, let me, and, and then they just vomit all of the, that's not, there's a time and a place for that. And so number one, that's just professional etiquette. But honestly, even for me at that time, I wasn't thinking about Discover Her because when, when Summer came to me, she asked about the organization. So if I were to say, oh, well, here's the organization, but ignore that, even though I'm at the membership table. So let me tell you about me, because I want your coins. That would have been the beginning and the end of that, right? And, and that's Absolutely. being transparent. Um, the other side to that was, you know, the thought jumping to the, the event where we ran into each other, you were like, you. Um, I was so embarrassed. I was like, yeah, I was supposed to call this lady. And at this point I did know who Summer was. And so I was like, yeah, I'm probably not necessarily gonna get a partnership, but nonetheless, she's cool. Like I wanna, I wanna get to know her. So even in that point, I was still, it was, it was this, uh, it was, it was a little bit of conflicting because it was this man, ugh, okay, I have to, I have to acknowledge that I messed up. And that's sometimes something that people don't want to do and say, hey, let me raise my hand and apologize. Because it's that we are, we end up being in our own minds like, oh man, this person's never going to partner with me because I didn't call them and then I didn't keep my word. So now I never keep my word. Calm down. People get busy. Like it's this is just life. Like that's what happens. And guess what? This person gave you their contact information. 
at an event where you were working or, you know, whatever the situation was. So again, I had to step out of that mindset and I said, Hey, I'm going to call you this time. And I think I emailed while I was there. So I didn't forget. So there's so much, you know, that, that really can, that we can talk about and really even still unpack from that initial meet. But the way I want to share it from, from my perspective is exactly this. No, that the relationship will go so much further than if you are focusing on closing the dollar or securing the bag. And, and I want that to be very clear because here's, here's the, the real truth. Summer could choose to leave this organization, but because I developed a relationship with Summer, wherever she goes, she can't forget me. However that sounds, however that sounds, however that sounds, somewhere, wherever she goes, for now, she can stay at Comerica, but I'm, my, the point is, if you show up and you're initiating that relationship, wherever that person goes, and you really showed up to serve and you made it about that person, not just you and you getting the deal, that mm -hmm. can take you further than whatever you can even imagine with that partnership. You know, and I wanna, I kinda wanna unpack that a little bit further where when, when we first started talking, the, the first opportunity wasn't what we're doing now. That was a conference. So yeah. what's the difference? What would you say is the difference between the types of partnerships that, you have even said yes to. Can we talk a little yeah. bit about that so we can give them perspective to, for them to start just thinking about ways that they can even make the ask? So and I'll explain it how, how you came up because the first one is, oh, let's just, let's just sponsor this annual conference. Fantastic. That was 2019. Then 2020 hit. There was no annual conference. Right. And so on my end, we were just like, okay, I need, like, I need to create programs. So as, as a corporation during 2020, yes, we were employed, but they took, they gave us a lot of work to make sure that they were help that we were helping the community. So I was creating programs. I was creating content. We were creating different slides and speaking and figuring out virtual and working endless hours, not just for like PPP, but you know, ev everything, but we just needed to help the community and we needed to get funding out as well to the community and who can do it the best. So a lot of our monies went over to um, organizations who helped the first responders um, and, and people on the front line, people on the, the jobs that they couldn't go home and work from home. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our funds were there. And then our, the rest of our funds were going to entrepreneurs who needed to stay in business. Okay, not just including the PPP, but entrepreneurs who need to stay in business. And with that, entrepreneurs who are, who are nonprofits who would be able to help these people stay in business with business literacy, financial education, kind of breakdowns of how to run your business, the business basics, so that they wouldn't go under. And then that's when I had to run through my list of companies. So I don't look for new companies at that time, right? It's 2020. It's, it's extreme conditions. It's we need urgency coming through. I needed to go to companies who I knew could, who could supply on demand, who, okay, who could give us what we needed at this time and, and be flexible with our needs because we didn't know what was going on in the world at the same time. Okay. Just as you didn't know, we didn't know. So we were just doing whatever we could based on information that was provided to us. So that's why we created, we always had this, this program called the business, business sense program. Okay. It's business foundation skills. It's like a, 12 modules. I'm like, it's huge. We condensed it and said, we need quick impact to our community. And so I went through my list and I picked out three people from my list of organizations that I knew could do who, who, who could supply what I needed, right? Who could give it to us. And Margo was one of them. A couple of the other organizations were much larger organizations because I knew that they had the, the ability to, to spread it across their members, right? But I knew Margo had a niche. So number one, I knew Margo was flexible because she, she owned the business. She could do whatever she wants. So I said, yes, summer I can do it or no, summer I can't do it, right? Number two, Margo had the clients I needed. My focus for that year was women and girls. I was like, hey, yes, 
Margot meets that. Her, her company is all de developed and designed around women, right? Nonprofit well, not, uh, founders for, for, or even some CEOs that are for for profits, but she dealt with women. And then the third one is I needed to make sure that we dealt with, uh, with organizations and, and companies that we could actually reach. I didn't want to give Margot funding to get five people. That's not an impact for a bank. Just because it's, it's just, just even if she, Margo said, look, we transformed the lives of these organizations. We did so much for them. There's it's just five. I, I need more than that. And that's in the bank land. Like when we think about it, we need an impact that's greater than what we can do. If that's the case, I can do it myself. Like five people, I can go in a corner and talk to these people. Because I needed someone who could reach the communities that I can't always reach, right? Margo, I knew Margo could do that. She already proved that she could do that. So that, that wasn't even a question. Yeah. There is actually some of the larger companies they gave money to didn't do as much as Margot did. So I don't do, I, I don't do the same thing with them. Um, but anyway, Margot has been doing this because I knew she can meet those three things and she's been doing it consistently. And even though COVID isn't as extreme as it was in 2020 as it is now, but it's still uh, business development is still needed in, in our community. And I'm still going on with the sessions because I know Margo's still making a difference. As long as Margo can still make an impact, we're still doing business boot camps. That's basically what it is. So as a bank, when I think of it, I try to say, well, can you do, can I show, okay, these are the numbers from one of my organizations, AKA Margo's organization. Can you do this? Will you be able to match that? Do you have the, do you have anybody who can specialize in social media to make sure this posts? And that's some of the issues with large organizations. They don't have the manpower to, to run social media. They don't know how to do it as an organization. They don't have the manpower to hire anybody. So they're still focused on trying to do it in person, just switching to virtual with the same few people that they have and they won't get the same. So it's not the same. So Margo was flexible. She was able to move quickly. She was able to develop the, the program. I, again, she didn't make me think either. She said, Summer, this is everything. You just show up and you, and you, you talk. I said, I can do that. That's easy. She made it easy for me. She made it easy for the bank. So she makes the check easy to the right. It's never a question. Never a question. Again, you you hit so many different pieces. And I'll, I'll take the mic for a little while as well, because what we're seeing here is a, a common theme in, in the few pieces that uh, that I heard you say. Number one, when there is a need, be sure that you can fill the gap. Be, be sure that you can provide the solution or create a solution for them. And then that last piece, make it easy. So I'm not sitting here texting Summer every other day. Okay, I have to get 12 speakers, Summer. Um, so what about this person? You, can, can we assess this person? Can we do some like interview calls with these people? Summer is Someone's like, oh, hey, Margo, what's the topic in like five minutes? No, I'm kidding. She's not, she's not that bad. But I'm saying I do the heavy lifting. My team, we do the heavy lifting. We secure the speakers. We make sure the speakers know what the topic is, what to post, when to post. My, we, my team does the flyer. Like we handle that. We send it to summer when our tech issues aren't going bizarre, right? But at the same time, we make it easy for summer to be here. And then here's the kicker. We have Summer in her role, which is a pretty high role. I'm going to just, I like that. I, this is great for me. But we get to sit with Summer for 90 minutes once a month. Now, your vision may be completely different. It may not be a business boot camp. So your, the dynamics of the partnership will look different. The um, conversations in which you're having may look different. You may solely just need a check. That's great. You may need a face of an organization. You may need a partner, a partnership where that company, that individual is on your board or what have you. Like there's so many different dynamics when we talk about partnerships, which really isn't the focus of the conversation today. However, you have to be willing to identify the need that you are actually able to fill, please be sure to fill it. Don't, don't, do not. That is the quickest way to never get that partnership again. And guess what? They know people. Um, so yeah. word of mouth, word of mouth can yeah. have like the opposite effect as well, right? So if you cannot fill that need, say no, or, or 
if you believe that you can get it, hey, give me, can, can, I, can I take 24 hours to, to look up some things and, and then get back to you? And then you go and immediately do your due diligence. And if you can find somebody, outsource, great. And then go back to that discussion and say, yes, I can close the deal. They don't care about the minutia and how you get it done. They just want it done. That is their objective, when, especially when they write that check. And so I wanted to share some of those things when it comes to my side, your side, because Summer is sharing what she's sharing from the sponsor side, but she also has businesses. So she knows this from not just working in corporate. And then for me, I know this number one from experience, but then also because I did things the wrong way or I didn't document my process. And so when it was like, hey, we do need sponsors and partners, we had to go through things a little bit differently um, because I, I didn't have the process documented. And so I wanna share a few other pieces that are gonna be really important as you begin to pursue partnerships for your business, for your journey. One of the things that I'm always asked is like, but how do you do it though? Um, just referencing the conference, we at Con, uh, just an annual conference. We haven't done it in a few years because of COVID, still one of the best women's development experiences. I'm biased, but you know, whatever. The reason I'm saying this is when we hosted We at Con 2019, we had multiple financial institutions as partners. It wasn't just Comerica. And I'm not going to go through them because Comerica is sponsoring this today. So there's that. I'm going to give clout to uh, Comerica today. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But we had several... <laughs> we had several financial institutions who were uh, sponsors who purchased tables. Summer mentioned purchasing a table at another event. Um, but here's the thing. They didn't just purchase the table. We invited them to come because that is one thing that I make sure to do. I don't want to check for you. All money is not good money. I need you to know where your money's going. I need you to be like to actually experience it. And so each partner was in the room every single I think that year I think we had probably eight to eight to 13 different partners that year every single partner was in the room every single one they may have stayed for five minutes I didn't care but at the same time they got to see what was going on they got to see where their money was going and guess what we retained almost every single partnership and here's the, mm -hmm. and I want again this to be clear Every partnership isn't the same, right? Let's say we got a thousand bucks for one from one. Somebody else, we may have gotten five figures. Somebody else, it may have only been an in-kind, but that's what we needed in that season. So do not write off the type of partnership, the type of sponsorship you may receive. And then also going back to a point that I said uh, or previously, be willing to ask for what you want ask for what you need. That's a quote by the late Dr. Maya Angelou. And I use that sometimes to really encourage me or motivate me when I go in to make an ask, because a lot of the times it's not with someone like Summer where I'm like, hey, Summer, hey, can we do this? That's an easy conversation. It's a text. Other times mm -hmm. it's a formalized, I don't know you email. Hi, my name is Margo and such and such, you know, responded to me and here's what we do. And it's very technical where I'll point out um, other organizations they've supported, uh, where we align, where we can, uh, where, where it's similar to, um, yeah. so they can see the connection like, okay, well we partnered with them, but what do you have to do with it? We make that connection for them so they don't have to think. And then also we say, hey, this is what you said you're working on in this season. This is what we can do to pair with that really, really well. Would love some time, 15 minutes. I do not do 30, 45, time is so important. I'll say, hey, I'd love to do a 15 minute discussion about X, Y, Z. And so I, again, I wanted to paint that picture because with summer, sometimes it's a simple text. Other times it's a formal email because mm -hmm. that is the dynamic of the relationship. And so when I go and make that ask, it's about establishing that relationship first. And then 
going and saying, hey, this is what we can do. And I always pull them in and ask, you know, do you have any other feedback? Do you, would you approach it a, a different way? Do you have any other success stories or are we building this from scratch? Because again, we're flexible. The other piece that I want to add to this, um, when you are going to either make an ask, you have to know what your end goal is. What is in it for the partner? But what are you actually looking to achieve when it comes to the partnership? Is it a one and done event? Because that the, the, the longevity is what's important a lot of times for the prospective partner or the prospective sponsor. Okay, so it's really important to know what are you going to be doing after that partnership is secured or required. So that's where I end up going into this conversation when I work with clients and I talk about the importance of your partnership retention plan. What are you going to do after that partnership is secured? And again, a lot of the times that partnership retention plan happens before the partnership is secured. I need to know summer, how, how much involvement does summer want to do? I need to mm -hmm. know how much work my, me and my team need to be doing. And so there, you know, some people get overwhelmed with the process, but ultimately, ultimately partnerships can take you further, not necessarily faster, but they can take you further and help allow you to make a greater impact than you would if you were trying to do it by yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's so smart. And I think, I think that's, a, that's, that's another one. That's another myth. That's another reason why a lot of people end up not acquiring the partnership because they just don't know, they don't even know what we just talked about. They don't know what we just shared. Um, there was another piece that I wanted us to talk about. And we can kind of go back and forth with this if you wanted to chime in. But one of, one of the other pieces is what does it look like when, the partnership is, is done, whether you don't necessarily think it's the best fit or mm -hmm. we don't think it's the best fit. How, what, what, what is that process like? How do, you, how do you go about dissolving or transitioning out of a partnership that you acquired? So I'll give you two, two answers. Um, one is the very corporate, we are going to figure out what we can do with this partnership because we don't like to just break partnerships. We, we really don't. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if the community, if the organization is still doing work, good work in the community, yeah. but they might not be doing the, the best work as another organization, right? You might've found as a company, you may have found another organization who can do it better, quicker, faster, you know, all, all the things corporations love. Um, but you're still a good organization. So we will um, let you know that we are looking at different, maybe different alignments, or maybe, you know, we'll do something, you'll see a shift with a corporation. You won't see them eager to do anything, but you will see a slight shift from the corporation. And the, the real, real way you know if an organization is starting to, or if a corporation is starting to um, remove your organization, if you see the dollars go down. Yep. So let's say the first year you had a thousand, second year you had 3000, third year you had 5,000, fourth year you had 3000. Well, wait a minute. Well, I was going up. Why am I going down? It's because the, the company is removing you gradually out of their, um, out, out of their contributions. So the basic way, and this is the, like the, the more realistic way is like, look, we, we're not going to just cut ties, but we're going to phase you out. And that's really where it comes down to. And then they have a discussion with the company when they get down to a lower level and be like, look, I'm sorry, our line, our goals don't align. This is how it is. It, business is business. So you have to realize the mindset of a corporation. It's not summer's money that's being given, it's Comerica's money. And I need it to work in this way. And sometimes there is no relationship 
the discussion of the, the communication never takes place. You just see the dollars and you're like, oh, it's different. Or if you let somebody else handle the dollars, they don't tell you that there's a $2,000 difference. Doesn't sound big, but for, for a corporation, we're just like, we're slowly gradually getting rid of you. If you wanna ask us what we're doing, that's great, but we're not gonna have this communication yet because we don't have to, because we never have. Now, yeah. if there's always been a communication, let's say for Margo, let's say the bank takes a completely turn change everything something happened now now we're doing everything for puppies or now we're doing everything for like fema i don't know let's say we're, we're no longer looking at financial literacy no longer looking at businesses margo doesn't handle puppies and i'm just like well margo i don't want to i'll let margo know hey we're going puppies so i'm gonna have to move my my dollars somewhere else yeah. but I, I i i don't want to get rid of you you know just cut you dry so let's let's just, let's phase it down. Okay. So instead of doing 10 business boot camps, let's just do five and I'll give you half of what I gave you last year. So I'll have that communication. So she's ready and prepared unless she wants to all of a sudden come up with stuff with puppies, but that she knows that the, the, the goal and the focus of the bank is different than where it was three years ago. Mm -hmm. So those type of, um, not strategic planning moments, because I don't need a strategic plan with Margot, but I would like to know what her goals are. And she wants to know what the bank schools are. I let her know every single year. This is what the bank schools are. You keep doing what you're doing and you're fine. Like I, the person will be honest with you, the corporation, but there is a difficult, it's very awkward for the, not for the bank, but the, for, for the person who has to relay that information to another for, for community organization. It's very hard for us. It's like breaking up. Right. It's just like it's, if, if there is a true relationship, it's very hard. And honestly, if that ever happened between Margo and I, I would find another bank for Margo to to do what she's doing for. That's that's it. But if it was somebody else, well, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't I'm like, I'm so sorry. We're, we're going a different direction. Here's two thousand dollars. Like that's, that's how it goes. And that's that's the name of the game. It's like, don't 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 come at me for 2023 because I've already worked my my budget for that. So we're out of money that, and that, and we have a bucket, I use it and there's no more. So that's kind of how it goes for the, the breakup, <laughs> the business breakup with the corporation. No. And this is, and here's the thing, right? It's like, we have these like great conversations and partnerships are possible, but we got to be real. And we do that every discussion that we have, like, right. Because here's the thing. I don't want you to just go and jump today and just think that from this point forward, because we had this discussion, we told you what you need, that you're gonna get these yeses right out the gate. That's not necessarily the case, you may. And part of the reason why I wanted Summer, sponsor, to, to really set it up because it can come one way from me, but I need you to hear it from a source, a source who cuts a check or is connected to the, cut, the check being cut. I want to connect that, you know, okay, a, a business breakup. That's not the goal, right? Like that's not the intention. We don't want that to be the case. What we do want is for you to be fully informed when you go and pursue partnerships. And so I want to, to start there and then also go into this discussion of who. How do we make this a thing? How, how do we actually then go and acquire partnerships? Um, again, why did we start at this breakup, <laughs> partnership breakup? Because it makes a difference with who you ask. And so I want to share this, uh, call it a framework, if you will, but I call it leverage your professional assets, leveraging your professional assets. Um, one aspect of this is what you know. Your, your, your intellectual property is an asset for you. That is one way that you can fill a need, right? That is one way you can provide a solution where a company, an organization, or even an individual can, can have a gap. So that's, that's a really big piece. But this other side, kind of like the part two of this conversation of leveraging your professional assets, who you know, who knows you, who you need to know, and who should know you. I will run that back for the people in the back. Who you know, <laughs> who knows you, who you need to know, and who should know you. What does this have to do with anything? Okay, 
initially, we started out with Summer telling the story. We did not know each other from Adam. So if I walked up to her and said, hey, you're Comerica, I need a check too. That may not have gone anywhere. But here's the difference in that same experience. If the CEO of that organization said, hey, Summer, this is Margo. She has a great organization. You need to know her. That would have gone a long way. Who knows me? Someone introduced me to someone else. Another way would have been a form, me reaching out saying, hey, Summer, I noticed that you partnered with this organization, the example I gave earlier, um, and, and here's the similarity. Would you be open for a discussion on this? Would you be open for a coffee day? Or today, would you be open for a virtual coffee and discuss X, Y, Z? She may say yes, she may say no. Okay, great. And so then the other side is if Summer is looking for something specific and she happens to come across my information, that's another way I can come on her radar. Or the fourth one, who should know me. If Summer puts a call out to her network and say, hey, does anyone know, this is one thing that we're working on in this season, does anybody know an organization that does this. Mm -hmm. It may not and we be do that all the time. And it may not be someone saying, oh, here's a personal introduction, like the example that I gave earlier, right? Somebody saying, hey, Summer, this is Margo, Margo Summer. It may not be that, but Summer putting out this call or somebody, an organization, individual company, putting out this call and then someone tagging you, another person tagging you, multiple mm -hmm. people tagging you. It is not a direct introduction, but now that you've come up on their radar more than once, they're going to inquire naturally. They are going mm -hmm. to inquire because if multiple people put your name in the hat, why? Now they're still gonna do their due diligence to make sure you can deliver. There may be a part two of a conversation and there could still be a no, but... <laughs> <laughs> the hope is that there is a conversation and uh, let's see what we can do. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can continue. Let Actually, this is going to be great. Let's sign on the dotted line, right? And so I wanted to set you up for success looking at who do you know? This could be your first degree, second degree, and honestly, even your third degree connections. Look at LinkedIn, there's a little number at the bottom, you'll know who's who. When, when it's your first degree connection, that's an easy, an easy, hey, I'm working on this project, do you know anybody? Easy one. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, Summer, I'm gonna put Summer out real quick. Summer is not necessarily one to give all of the referrals. And because here's the thing, everybody does not do business with integrity. It's just the fact, we'll call it what it is. And so there was something that I needed and I wanted to get in with somebody. And I said, hey, Summer, can you do this introduction? Can you do this referral? Because I knew Summer had an in. And she let me know out of the gate. She was like, Margo, I don't do this, but. And she made the introduction. Now, again, that may not be your situation, but if you go and make the ask, to someone in your network and say, hey, I know you work for X company. Can you give me a little bit more insight into the ERGs? I'm looking to do a training with that group or a group. Is that something that they do? Is that something that they may be open to? If they say yes, great. Would you be willing to put your life on the line and introduce me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make the ask because some people may not if they know you personally I say this all the time your personal habits become your business principles I'm gonna say that one for the people in the back your personal habits become your business principles so if people know you a certain way and then you start making asks of them and if you don't show up with integrity or professionalism in certain aspects, right? Because again, these are personal principles. Mm -hmm. They will reflect and you may not get the referrals in which you're seeking simply because 
you don't have certain standards in your personal life, okay? So I, again, got, I have to tell you that. Again, wanna set you up for success. The other side to this is be okay if they say no. Don't try and cancel them. Don't try and sever the, you're supposed to be my friend or my advocate and you won't introduce me. Look, they're not an entrepreneur. They want to keep that job. And so if they <laughs> refer you and you don't deliver, they referred you, right? And even if you do deliver or what have you, some people have their personal preferences. So please make sure that if you make an ask of someone in your personal network, your professional network, and they say no, say, thank you so much. Is there somebody else? Keep asking. I, I didn't say stop asking. Keep asking different ways because again, if, if you know if you know that you can make an impact with this organization or with the part with the company with an individual see if there's an alternative when you know summer mentioned earlier if it's a no it may be a not now or never or maybe next time maybe next year maybe next funding round and so when i say ask again i'm not saying Keep, keep nagging that one person. I'm saying, hey, is there anybody uh, in your company that I, I I should reach out to? You don't have to refer me. I'll make I'll, I'll reach out. And guess what? I won't even say your name. For, give them a little bit of uh, uh, of a reason and incentive to say yes to you, right? And they may then give you a name. But again, keep your word and don't then go and say, hey, Tiffany. Um, yeah, Summer gave me. <laughs> you, first of all, you done told Summer that you wouldn't say Summer's name. So do not, don't do that. Just go and say, hey, Tiffany, um, I'd love to chat with you about this. I know that you focus on X, Y, Z. And let that happen organically. Let that relationship bloom or not the way in which it is intending to. Okay, yeah. so that is, I, I wanted to make that uh, piece. And I want to pause, Summer, because I, I know you were saying, yes, that happens. I gave those four examples of, you know, the the who knows you, uh, who you mm -hmm. know, um, the who should you know, and then who should know you. Please I, chime in. There's more that we can unpack with this. but there, I, I, There's so much more. And I want to give everybody the chance to um, understand and kind of give the secret sauces when it comes to working with a, a corporation or, or being a getting sponsors. Um, what Margo was speaking of with the emails, yes, but I will tell you, I receive about five a day. I do. And I know it's sad, but I don't, I can't get to all of them because I still have my organizations that I do have partnerships with that I need to respond to and do. So I get about 150 emails a day, period, daily. You, you're gone for a week and guess what happened? Like, it's just chaotic. And if we're out in the field and we're working, we're visiting other organizations or we're touring or we're lunch meetings, this and that, it is hard to continue to build more relationships. Like, I have to manage the relationships I already have. Like, this is not my business. Someone pays me to do this. It is already hard enough. I have to go home. Like, we are people too, right? Yeah. We have to go home, we have kids, we have spouses. If we're women, sometimes we got to cook. If the men cook, then praise the Lord for you. But I, that doesn't happen in my house, okay? My husband works just as much. We have family. We're doing so many different things. And it's really, really, really hard to get a response from a corporation via email. Now, with that said, the easiest way to get a response from a corporation is in person. And you go where they go. So the key for this is... We're, still, we're, we're now back in person, right? I don't know, whatever you'd like to do, you stick with your comfort level, but we are back in person. The companies are saying, you, you get back into your desk, you get back into the offices, we have the lights on for you, you go ahead and work. We're working, meaning we're also doing events. Our event season is in the spring and in the fall. So when these events happen, they're gonna be with the big organizations that have these giant events at the Biltmore, at the JW Marriott, in, in PV, over at the Mana Lucia in PV. We do these big events, we show up, we're at the West End, we're at the Venetian, we're everywhere, okay? We're everywhere there's a big resort, we're going to these events. Look up to see where these events are. If you have even one connection, let that connection know that you're interested in going. Let them know that. 
And you wanna know why? Cause you're just like, oh my gosh, these events are great. It's like $500 a plate, but the company, we pay for a whole table. We pay for it. Do you think that entices people to go? Absolutely not. <laughs> we can't fill a table half the time. I'm just like, oh my gosh, we have a table that fills the seats 10 and I have five people. I need to find people to come to this event. Yep. That's what that's what the corporation is. And you as a business owner are like, oh gosh, that would look so I nice. I wish I had more $500 to go. Like, you should have asked me. Like, I would have given you a table. I would have given you a ticket. You could have shown up. You would have been sitting at the table with corporations for at least two hours because that's how long these events are. For two hours. You could have had a conversation. Don't ask then, but just build that relationship. Let them know what you do. Listen to what they're telling, whatever they're telling you, listen. I don't care if they're talking about their babies. I don't care if they're talking about their grandma in Florida. I don't care what they're saying. Listen, okay? Mm -hmm. Use your listening ears. Because this is, this is when you capture that conversation. If I'm sitting here talking to you and it's, a, and it's for an hour and I'm just talking and talking, you don't even get a word in. Guess what? I'm going to walk away and say, that was a fantastic conversation. I just love, you know. She was Sally a good listener. Oh, I, I, don't know. <laughs> Sally, I didn't get a word in. Summer didn't talk for an hour. But guess what? Summer loves Sally now. Summer, loves, Summer will do business with Sally. Sally, where's your information? Sally, why didn't you why didn't you send me your information? So just because that person might be great, not might not be great at communicating, but they just you know give you all the information, they talk and talk and talk your ear off, that is fine. Let them talk your ear off if they're corporation and if you're sitting at their table. That just means more time, more FaceTime. They're gonna remember you. They're gonna remember you acknowledging them, they're gonna remember you listening to them, they're gonna be re remember your empathy towards them and their situation, whatever might be going on. I don't know but they are going to remember you. And then when you come back with an email, they're going, oh yeah, I remember you. You were, you were at my table or you were at the table next door to me or wherever you were. This is fantastic. Yes, let's go have and have that lunch. But if you just send me an email about wanting to have lunch, first of all, you want to take an hour of my time, which I probably have to pay for. No, I don't feel like doing that. That's no, no, thank you as a, as a corporation. So, but if I see you at an event, so you're already professional because we're at a business event. You're listening, that means you have some form of whether you do or don't, but you have some form of interest in the event that's taking place because it's typically for the community, yeah. right? And and you're there and you have our you have not just my attention, you have all the other corporations in the room. So if I'm there, that means others like me at all the other organizations are there. We all see each other at the same event. So we'll see you next week at this event. Okay, I'll be there. That's that's how it goes. So if you have one friend who might get tables or one, or even if you have a friend who knows someone who might get tables, you let Margo know, hey, Margo, I'm interested in going to this event. Does, does Summer have any extra seats? Summer would be like, yeah, I got an extra seat. Yeah. Show up, don't bring a whole family, just one, okay? Mm -hmm. Just just one, but show up. show up. Don't ask me if your kids can come. Don't ask me if your spouse can come. It's business. Yes. It's business. So you show up and you show up prepared bring your business cards you, you're prepared LinkedIn all that stuff okay you said something and you brought me back I don't know how I missed this apologies um because this is going to go back to kind of the beginning of the discussion you know so for those of you who are new if you've never been here before we kind of start like high level what is partnerships those type of discussions. And then we go deeper into the minutia, just so you know, like we, we literally do this, right? Um, one thing going back to what you said was, you know, you, you met me and I was serving. Um, and then you just are, you're talking about, you know, attending events. The, a lot of these companies are, are paying for the tables and, and people just, they don't want to go. So they, but they still need to fill the table and you have an opportunity to go, to be in the room. Right. I want to share another example that blew my mind because I was not expecting it. So there was an event um, and the ticket was fifteen hundred dollars. I was like, I mean, I got it, but I ain't got it like that. And just to drop it on a ticket and I got to travel. Look, mm, it, ah, I'm not getting paid to speak like I'm just going to go and be in the room now. It probably would have been a great organization or a great experience. But here's the thing a lot of p companies sponsor that $1,500 for their employees to go. This CEO was going to have to sponsor that 1,500, okay? And I just, 
No. Um, and so I was like, man, like, how can I be in the room? And I remembered a story, casual conversation with another professional some time ago. This, this woman said, you know, uh, if you, if you can't invest in a ticket, volunteer. And I was like, um, okay, that's, that's, that's good. Cause, cause you're still going to be in the room. And then she get, I said, tell me, like, can you give me a little bit more understanding? Like, well, you know, is there a specific role that I need to volunteer for, you know? And she goes, no, I, I just volunteered because I couldn't afford it. And she's like, honestly, at this time, it was a $50 plate, but in my life, at that time, I could not afford a $50 ticket to that event. And I was like, wow, okay. She puts it in perspective and she goes, when I a attended, I was there to serve the speakers. I didn't volunteer for that. That is the role that they put me over. And guess what? I was able to serve the one speaker that I wanted to meet. I was assigned to that person's room. She was, you know, so of course she's talking about it was the divine experience. But from there, she ended up getting an intern position at that guy's company. And then, then she worked at the company. And at the time she was still working for the guy's company, but then does her own consulting on the side. So again, it created an entire life for her that if she would have been driven by ego, I'm not gonna serve. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give, I'm not going to give of my time. She would have missed that opportunity. I can guarantee her life would have been completely different. That was somebody else. Let me tell you what that story did for me. That one story, when I saw that $1,500 price tag and I was like, it's a no for me. I was like, let me, let me see how I can serve. And so I reached out to the organization and I said, hey, I'd love to volunteer. I'll stuff bags. I'm a great bag stuffer. Let me be very clear. And so I was like, let me stuff bags. I'll roll t-shirt. I know how to roll. Like, what, what do you need me to do? And I never heard back. And I was so bummed. And then I get an email from the, the, from the organization and it was like volunteer, co uh, uh, I think it was a volunteer coaching position. And I was like, hold up. I'm a coach. So this, this is actually a win. And I ended up having the opportunity to be an executive coach with black enterprise magazine. What do we talk? I, I, if you're not picking up what I'm saying, I applied to volunteer and stuff bags, but I ended up, they didn't even get that email, by the way, I tracked that down. They never got that email. I still tell this, they have no idea how I was on their radar and I don't care because for two years in a row, my face was on that website as an executive coach for Black Enterprise. They are, if you don't know who they are, it, it is a national media company. International actually, because it's virtual. So why is that important? Why am I even sharing that story? Why is that even, why is that a win for me that could be a win for you? I use mm -hmm. somebody else's story to, to raise my hand and serve. And God said, mm, bigger. And that organization still tell this, they have no clue how they figured out, found me, little old me, right? I was playing small in that season of my life. They found little old me and invited me to come and be there. And guess what? I served again because I, it wasn't a paid role. It wasn't a paid executive coach, but guess what? I got a comp ticket. I got a bomb swag bag. I still have that purse today and it's still fresh. That's beside the point. But I was able to be in the room with tons of other coaches. Several of those coaches, guess what? They've been guests on the boot camp. I still talk to them. That was in 2018, year one was when I was there. They invited me back year two during COVID. And so why is this important? We're talking about partnerships. We're talking about establishing partnerships. We're talking about retaining the partnerships. And now what I just shared with you, what happened after that one opportunity didn't just invite me. They didn't just invite me back. I made long-term relationships with uh, the other people that I met while I was there. Some of them were other coaches, but some of them were other attendees. Some of those other guests, ended up becoming sponsors for my conference the next year. 
So I really, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be an advocate for partnerships because when they started, they started so organically and I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't even know it was, it, it was a challenge for other people because I simply asked for what I needed. If I needed an office space, I asked for it. When I started hosting events, it was in the public library. Shout out to Hive Central at the Burton Bar Library in Phoenix. You will always have a place in my heart because you helped me kick off my first event, right? So don't, don't think that any opportunity is too small. I created that event at the Hive. Mm -hmm. And then some random person, I went into the library one day and my logo, so, some artist drew my logo on the whiteboard. And it was like in a whole like collage, a painting that they did there. So the impact that, that we made by, by showing up and serving, it was bigger than that because all mm -hmm. these random people who were coming to the library what is she doing? What is she talking about in there? Where is she? Oh, can I come? I got clients that way. I mm -hmm. met other people, other people who could create additional opportunities later that I didn't, that's not what I went to serve. That was it. That, that was my goal. That was my objective back in 2013 when I first started. And now today we're sitting here for 90 minutes with Comerica Bank. But here's, if I did not make that first ask to the public library, I can, I'm telling you, I know this sound, this might sound super crazy. It's like, Margaret, really, that's a stretch. It's not. If I didn't make that ask, I did not have a venue and I did not have the budget to invest in one. If I didn't make the ask for my public library as a resident of Phoenix, if I didn't make that ask, I cannot guarantee that I'd be here today. Mm -hmm. Having this conversation with Summer, teaching you about the power of collaboration, the importance of partnerships. I honestly can't say that today. And so I want you, uh, you know, as we're, we're landing the plane, we do have a little bit more time, um, but we did talk about several things today. I really want you to go and take inventory of, of your, the people in your network, the people that you know, first degree connections, second degree connections, third degree, make a list. Those individuals, do they work for a company? Are they the one you would partner with? Um, do your due diligence, do your research on those companies before you make a bold ask and yes, even to a friend. That is part of that, the personal habits business principles conversation that we mentioned earlier. If you show up prepared to a friend, a cousin, an auntie, a whatever, and say, hey, I was looking into your organization and I know you do this. Um, I don't know if you actually know what I do because our families love to tell us like, oh, you're a little cute business. My business is not little. We actually brought in seven figures, but you know, um, they don't get it because they're not necessarily entrepreneurs. So if you bring to them some, some substance and say, hey, I was looking into this. Can you point me in the right direction, friend, cousin? Yes, actually I can. And the perspective of you may change. Not that you're after them, that's not the goal but you, that they may be an avenue, they may be a vehicle for you making that connection with an organization that you may not have otherwise. And then from there, you can make the impact that you are placed in this world to make. That's your action assignment, that's your homework. If you take them, take anything away that we said today, make that list of your connections and start praying over, we always have to bring it to church, start, start, start praying over, start thinking about the people on that list. And if it aligns, what is for you is for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we could, we can milk it, but I don't think we need to. If I think we've said a lot. It's a lot of information that went out. So it is. And it's, you know, these conversations are always so meaty and there's so always so much to digest. Um, and if you didn't know, when we do the replay, we also do provide show notes um, and then 
we've transcribed the the segment as well. Um, it may not always pick it up because technology, right? But we, we really, our goal here, when we do these boot camps, um, we said it in the intro, it wasn't just a professional intro, this is our heart. We wanna provide you with tangible strategies and tips that you can apply to your business immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you have to go back and watch these 90 minutes over again. You don't have to sit there and do that. If you want to, go ahead. Just push play, put it on 1.75X. There you go. Um, but what we do want you to do is go back over the notes that you were able to take. I, I would recommend that you do watch the replay and take some time to really consider if you are positioned for partnerships. And I'm talking about having your business structured the way it needs to be structured and being able to actually create a solution to solve the problem. If you're not ready, that's okay. Get there and then make the ask. If you make the ask and you get a no, not right now, new opportunity or next opportunity. Those are some of the key pieces that I wanna remind you. Summer, any takeaway, any what's next? Anything that you um, the, the key thing I would say for what we've discussed and, and we have discussed a lot, it, it is a lot, but just kind of like Margo said, if, you're, if you don't think you're ready um, to have that relationship right now with a corporation, it doesn't mean you can't do business to business with someone who's similar to where you are right now. You, nope. you absolutely know other entrepreneurs. You can certainly do collaborations. And once you do that form of collaboration, even if it might cost you money to do it, it's going to cost the other company money. You guys can figure out a way like to make it larger. So once you do a small collaboration with a corporate or with another organization similar to yours, then look to collaborate with another and another. And then you'll get confident in how to collaborate with others, meaning working with others and, and, and knowing where your skill set lies, whether it's in technology or if, like if there is a fire that needs to be made, if anybody ever came to me, I would say nothing's going to happen because I am horrible at making flyers. But if something, if that's something that you realize is your skill, then you can add that kind of to your package that you're going to be submitting to a, a corporation or a larger organization to collaborate. And don't forget about the, the large nonprofits. They do collaborations with nonprofits all the time. They'd love to do that. That's where their heart is. They want to help because they were once in your shoes. So definitely try to collaborate with those large nonprofits. And those large nonprofits refer people to me too. So make sure, because again, everybody in the game talks. So just start collaborating. You might have to start on a smaller base. So if, you, if your company has a gross annual revenue currently of $100,000, then work with another company who has $100,000, you know, um, and, and, and look at it that way. And you might not know their, you know, you might not know their, their, their grilled down dollars, but you, you can tell. You can tell if there's a $2 million company, you can tell if it's a $100,000 company. Like you can tell. So, so work with, with that arena and, and just keep growing that way. And I think the confidence will come to where when you are speaking with a corporate uh, um, officer or an executive, whoever you talk to, if you, if you come, um, come up to them and say, this is me, let's have a conversation. I'd love to talk. I'd love to share my ideas of how I can help. If it's, this is one real key. And I think I've only said it maybe once or twice in the last few years, but our giving season is all throughout the year but our decision on who we give to is made between august and end of september very beginning of october our budgets are done so if you come to me this year in october i say oh my gosh summer i really want to do this it's gonna and, and don't come at me with the whole platinum package two hundred fifty thousand dollars it's an automatic no like there's no even i've had plenty of those and they send me and i'm like I'm like, dumb. I was born yesterday. I know $250,000. Like, no, I'm a person. I know what these numbers look like. Let me know. Platinum package might be $10,000. Platinum package might be $15,000. But I can't do it for 2023. 
then I can look at it for 2024. But you have to know and be comfortable with a long plan, a long-term plan. It's okay if I say no for one year from now, but I can say yes two years from now. Yep. It, it, that, that's just how it goes. So in the meantime, collaborate with the other smaller organizations. Have them speak on, on your podcast or come, have them come and talk because they need to voice their stuff too. They need to be seen just as you need to be seen. So go ahead, Mario. Look like yes. Oh, yeah, I, look, that was a shouting. That was a shout. That like, I was gonna shout in a second ago. Um, two summers point. I want to drive this home. These partners, these sponsors are people too. In this season, I have been given a word from the Lord on what I'm doing next. It's, I'm always going to know how to do partnerships, Co consulting at the strategic partner level events. That's always going to have a sweet spot in my heart. And I will probably still do it on the back end. And especially if someone's cutting me a check, but I know in this season, and this is not a public announcement that I'm hanging up my hat. No, I'm, I'm sharing this for you all to understand. Uh, sometimes in seasons we transition. Okay. In this season, we have reinstated seasons of life. Some people who may be hearing the replay are like, wait, what? You did that along? Yes. We, seasons of life was birthed in 2016. I put it away in 2018, completely pulled the program, didn't touch it again until an event that was impromptu in 2019. And I haven't touched it since it's 2022. In this season, I know an instructive that I've been given is to bring it back and to reinstate the experience, but we're doing so in a different way. Please hold on because there's a point that I'm making here. One of the ways is that we have an on-demand training. There, that's, It's an introduction to seasons of life. The second is inviting other people to host a seasons of life experience, okay? And then the third is an actual cohort experience. It's a membership, a monthly subscription. Same, ex well, almost the same, very similar from the introduction, live event, and the cohort. But we're meeting a different need. But it's one focus, one topic, okay? Why am I sharing this with you? I have three different uh, uh, offers, if you will, to say, hey, Summer, we're doing this, this, this. Does Comerica have an opening for something that we're working on? No, okay, great, next time. Or, hey, Summer, anybody that you can think of because Summer knows what we do. She knows how I deliver. So even though it may be a no for Comerica, she, may personally want to sew into this, or she may know somebody else that can refer. So I'm still going to share it with every single person in my network. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, when Summer just said that last piece, it reminded me to share that with you. Even if you're transitioning, don't write it off, but let the people in your network know what you have going on. They may not be, a part, be able to be a part of it right now, but maybe in a couple months from now, maybe the following year. But as we come and land this plane, Summer just told you, now don't necessarily run to Summer, she's mine, no, I'm kidding. But what I'm saying is Summer just said, August and September, the doors are closed for what they're doing in the next year. That's where the decisions are made during that time frame. It's about to be July 1st tomorrow. So you have 30 days to have certain conversations. You've already established relationships with a ton of people. It is not time for you to now leverage your professional assets. We ended up going the full 90 minutes anyway. But I feel like those last pieces were so important, um, a, a good cherry on top for this discussion yeah. around strategic partnerships made simple. So Summer, always, it is always so good to see you. It is always so good to connect. I can't wait till we get to hug each other again. I, just, I feel like it's been forever. <laughs> 
it's literally been since September of last year. Um, but thank you. Again, we, yeah. we couldn't have these conversations without you. Um, and so we're so grateful to be on this journey with you. And we look forward Absolutely. to the next time. Yay. Thank you, everybody. Until next time. God bless. Thank you.